if you don't uh, things don't go your way, you, you get beat. I mean, the only way to you know, get that taste out of your mouth, go back out there and do it again. But the uniqueness of football is you play once every seven days or eight days or six days or whatever it is. So you got to find ways to get it out of your system. Um, obviously evaluating and doing things like that, but got to find ways to move on. And uh, I know for me, Sunday was was really good just to be around our guys, to recognize, to see, you know, their demeanors, their faces, their ability to go back out there and uh, go back to work. And uh, disappointed, of course, but yet it's not something that holds you back. And that's what I always worry about because of some of the, you know, successes that we've had is how do you, you know, rebound from some of these things and how long does it sting and how long does it uh, stay with you? And uh, what, what you can't do is allow it to compound and, and cause you problems for, you know, continued weeks. Um, we know we've got a long way to go and we got to get better. And uh, the only way you can do that is by going back to work. And, and uh, so I've been... You know, I'm actually really kind of excited about what the guys did and how they came in on Sunday, the attitudes of, uh, you know, of what they had. Um, you know, so we're excited about getting back out there today because this is defensively a unique week. And obviously offensively it's a unique week too because no matter what you do, you got to do it together. And uh, anytime you play a service academy, especially one, you know, like Navy that uh, knows what they do and does it really well, um, it puts pressure on everybody just with, uh, you know, maybe offensively the amount of possessions you might get and how critical everything is that you do. Questions? Are there realizations that set in from a loss with maybe players more specifically that they don't necessarily get from close wins? I, I don't know. I, I think it, it does. It stings a little bit more and it makes you, you know, kind of self evaluate a little bit more. Um, there's still things like I told them on Sunday, there's still things that you could be a guy that didn't play a snap and there's something that's pulling at you and making it tougher and harder to get better and to move forward. <clears throat> you could be a guy that, you know, Trey Tucker had 10 catches, maybe he played really well. <clears throat> In some ways, you, it can be masked of what really happened. And so I think. The thing that's different about when you lose is I think all those things pull guys at different ways, whether you played well, whether you didn't play well, whether you, you know, you didn't play at all, or you played a time. I mean, just where in a win, everybody still feels good. You know, you, you can, you don't, I don't think you self-evaluate quite as much. And I don't mean not how you played, but just in the big picture of things. So in some ways, there's a lot of things that we, uh, you know, that will help us grow and uh, we'll learn about each other. You open the season on the road, and then three of your first four conference games are on the road. Going to November now, is that like a little bit nicer feeling to see three of your final four at home? Do you think being on the road so much has had an adverse impact? I don't know. I don't know. I think that, uh, you know, sometimes it, it brings you closer together. I guess it just depends on how you handle it. I'm not one of those guys that studies the schedule, you know, and people would ask you at the beginning of the year, hey, what's the, you know, what do you look, I look at the first four and then you look at the next four and then I look at the next four and just kind of couple them together. And I don't know if I would change and do anything different. Um, you know, I just think it, uh, you know, you figure out what you got a little bit more sometimes on the road and uh, the way you do things. Um, but there's a comfort level, of obviously, being at home. And no matter what we've said since David walked in here is, you know, November is when it really, really, really matters. And uh, not that the beginning doesn't, just like the first four, not that they were preseason games. Um, but in order to grow, you got to be playing your best at the end of the year. And, and uh, you know, the great thing is, is we still got a lot of room to grow. And I think that's what gives me a little bit of excitement. I know that our guys in, in the seats and trying to find those ways to keep it exciting for what it is that they're doing, as opposed to just looking at the end result. Um, you know, and, and this is a this is a stretch that we've taught. We talk about in the in the winter. Uh, we talk about all through our winter workouts and in spring football. Not who you play at the end, but how you do things at the end of the year. We asked you about the run game and maybe why Corey didn't see a lot of action Saturday. You said you wanted to take a look at it. Now that you've seen it, did you maybe discover some things? He didn't play. I, I don't know. I needed to reevaluate and look at that. It, obviously, you have plans, and you put, you go into a game with a plan. And obviously, he's in the game plan. He's a big part of it. And sometimes plans change. And we weren't running the ball very well. Obviously, there were situations where we were throwing it a little bit more. And um, our older guys, we do feel probably a little bit more comfortable with uh, the protections of things. Um, so it's. It's a, it's a, you know, it's not a great situation. You'd love to give him more opportunities. He's a guy that has been very, you know, very good for us, obviously, in running the football. And he's still young and in, in the development and understanding the system. And I think that uh, we got in a situation where we felt a little bit more comfortable with the older guys, the two senior guys, um, you know. And those, those are one of those things we talk about on Sunday. It, there's all different ways that pull at you. And 
whether you're a guy that, like I said, that had 10 catches or a guy that had a bunch of tackles or a guy that for some reason didn't get an opportunity. Um, you know, no matter what, you got to find a way to make sure you understand the big picture of things and continue to move forward. On a positive note, Josh caught his 15th career touchdown. That's the school record for tight ends. Can you kind of reflect on that record for him and also considering the success that, that's come through this program at that position? And also, what has he meant to the success of this program? Well, this, what he's meant is the start of it. You know, I mean, in the recruiting, the whole all the way back then, you know, when we were trying to sell dreams. And uh, he was a guy that believed in us. He's a guy that, you know, stayed home and, and really saw what we were wanted to do. We couldn't show him what we wanted to do because we hadn't done anything really yet. Um, and then to see his progression, you know, I, I love to see it. He struggled as a young kid, meaning that, like, he didn't play a whole lot. And I'm sure he had this aspiration of walking in the door and, you know, breaking that record in the first two years. But um, he's had the ability to really grow and grow and grow, and he's done a phenomenal job. He's a, he's a big part of what we do. I, but it's also a great example of some of these guys to see how, you know, things don't always go the way you expect it to and want it to. You know, they look at his first two years between injuries and just not as many opportunities. You know, maybe some really good players like Josiah um, and some other guys that, uh, you know, he had to battle. And uh, that's what's made him who he is. This program's defense hasn't given up 500 plus yards very often in your time here. What did you see that they did well and that maybe think you could have done better on Saturday? Well, you know, you, you try to pick the things that you evaluate every week, and, and nobody wants to give up 500 yards, but, like, it, it comes down to points. It comes down to stops, um, you know. So for us, you know, we had an opportunity. We made some stops, but I think in the in the big picture of things, it, it comes down to big plays for us, and that's where we haven't done as good a job. And, um, you know, that's where the yards kind of rack up. You know, when you look at it, but it really, you know, whether it's 600 yards, 500 yards, or 200 yards, the reality is it comes down to points. And it comes down to, and what I always say is outplaying the other team's defense um, or outplaying the other team's offense. And, you know, but I think down the stretch is where, you know, it, it hurt the most. And, and there's some, our ability to, you know, finish, our ability to maybe, you know, get beat a little bit of our own game, get wore down a little bit that, um, you know, hasn't been something that's happened to us that uh, is one of those things that, that becomes a reality to you. And, uh, you know, so there's there's those areas where we know we got to do better. We got to be able to play more guys. And I think that's what it really comes down to. Saw a lot of three safety in this game. Was that wanting to get our Mori on, on the field some? Or? No, it's it's a little bit of limit with the defensive line guys. You know, we had we've, some of those guys have, have been out. Um, you know, and, and so and sometimes it's just something that fits us a little bit better. You know, and it, it was obviously a schematic thing, too, with a lot of the you know lateral plays that those guys were so good at. You know, they, they were much more of a, you know, sweeps and jet sweeps and things like that, where we felt like the speed we had on the field with the edges we could play um, gave us a better opportunity. What, you know, maybe it didn't give us is some of the physicality up inside when it when it all comes down to it. Three and out on the first two drives of each half for the offense how do you get them in a rhythm quicker well it's not easy for me to get them into a rhythm they, they got to get themselves in a lot of ways but you know we just got to figure out I think we're still trying to figure that thing out is, is who we are and how do we get started a little bit faster and um, it's not that you know to take away from anything the other teams are doing you know I think that sometimes you come out and guys do give you things that maybe you didn't expect and when that happens I think that's where some of our youth both offensively and defensively shows up is the ability to be able to adjust on the fly. You know, I, I would say in the last two years, we I think we were maybe better at that. And, you know, not because we were better coaches then. I just think that, you know, you had some guys that were a little further along that, you know, did a good job of being able to make adjustments, see it, recognize it, even within a series. Um, so twofold. I think we've got to continue to grow. And I think that, you know, we probably got to foresee some of that stuff um, and get a little bit better, you know, in our preparation. Is that the difference of a guy like Dez with four years of starting experience? Well, I, I don't just think it's the quarterback. It, it has obviously a lot to do with the quarterback, but I think it's the connection with the guys that are around him as well. Um, you know, and, and I think Ben is far beyond, you know, what anybody would say is a first-year starter, you know, or a guy that's, you know, only played one year. I mean, he, he's been in the system. He understands that he's very mature. He knows what he's doing. Um, but I think that the ability to, you know, do that as a whole – it makes it a little bit more difficult. Talked last week about the outside noise with Ben specifically. Do you talk to him at all about, you know, 
whether it's people wanting to change a quarterback or, or what you guys view internally? Is that something you sit down and actually talk to them about? It's hard for me because I don't hear it. So I, when you guys bring it up, then I would say, oh, wow, is there outside noise? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you know, maybe my seven-year-olds or eight-year-olds ask me, say, hey, Dad, is, uh, you know, ask me one of those questions because maybe they hear somebody on TV say it. But, you know, if, if I thought it was something that he needed, I would sit down with him. Not that, you know, all guys don't like reassurance, but he's he's mature beyond his years. I think that, uh, and to be honest with you, you know, I think he does a really good job. I think sometimes it's a little bit harder on the other side with Evan and, you know, don't want him to get frustrated, um, you know, and I don't want him to lose confidence in what it is that he's doing. It's just, you know, it's a little bit of the situation of which it is. Uh, so no matter what, those guys, you know, in that room, Coach Gino does a great job. Those guys know we've got confidence in them, you know, whether we have to reassure them that, you know, we can and do at times. But I hope that they don't pay too much attention to the outside noise. Uh, I'm not saying they don't hear it because – You'd have to be live under a rock to not hear it, right? I don't think most of those guys live under a rock. Um, but I think it's a part of being able to grow up and mature and understand that you know, what really matters is the guys in this room. You know, history, Navy's a good example of kind of having losses and then bouncing back from them maybe a year later, a couple years later. Did it with UCF in 2018. Does this feel like another example of that potentially? I, I don't know. I, I don't, you know, reflect back on some of those situations. I, I think that obviously when you're playing a service cabin Navy, it's always a little bit of a unique week. Um, in some ways, it was great. It was awesome, you know, to come back in here and actually be able to completely shift gears, get your mind onto something a little bit different. Um, so I, I know this, that every every team is different. Every year is different. Um, you know, sometimes week to week's a bit different, and, and that's where you really got to just continue to grow and make sure more than anything that the play on the field will take care of itself. The locker room and the preparation is what's so critical. Any update on Jabari and how much has it been a challenge? Malik's out. Jabari's been limited. Your fifth and sixth year guys in the yeah. Limits. That that's where some of the the depth of things is you know been a little bit of a challenge. That you know you got two guys that played a lot of football for you. Obviously Malik you know going out in game two and um, Bari obviously out you know for the last two games basically. Um, you know it, it it does it puts a little strain. But that's where we talk about those younger guys. The you know the Noah Potters, the Justin Watleys. A lot of those guys got to really step up. Um, you know, fill a bigger role, and you know that's what uh, that's what they have to do. That's what they're expected to do. And I tell you that they're they're growing, but I think that that's where you know last week some of the you know the wearing down um, probably hurt us a bit. Does it feel like teams are seeing that and and also not having a lot of success going at Briggs and Corleone? And now they're trying to get outside, maybe. Uh, a little? Maybe I mean I, that, that I don't think UCF did a whole lot different. Obviously, they're they're. They're always uniquely different, meaning that, you know, each and every week they've got some some things that they do and make it difficult on you. But they had been more of a perimeter run team. They had done a phenomenal job with, you know, getting their athletes in, in space and, you know, getting the quarterback outside in a lot of those situations. I think that, like you said, late in the game, um, you know, maybe they found a little something that, 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 you know, that they maybe didn't plan on early on. And, uh, you know, they stuck with it. You've not you've had your struggles at times against the run is it easy to look at them and say navy if we're not is what <laughs> uh, it we always need to is be. i mean I, those are the things that keep you awake for me at night um you know I, I know a lot of people would think that the game has become a passing game and uh it, it, it has evolved but you know i still think there's a lot of those things that start right there with the run and uh you know it's been a bit of a, a little bit of achilles heel and in, in some games we've been really really good and in some games we've been bad and uh you know that's where the consistency you know we, we've got to do a better job of for the run it seems like it's been quarterback kind of run schemes that have given you guys the most trouble how much of that is sauce and kobe not being there and, and maybe not having as much trust in leaving those guys by themselves. I, I know all those things add up, you know. I mean, you wouldn't say that, you know, having those two corners out there were, you know, a big part of stopping the quarterback run game in the last couple of years. Um, but I think the big picture of things that allows you to, to gang up and do some more things, maybe even, you know, pressure a little bit more and, and not worried about leaving those guys in islands. But you know, I'm not pointing a finger or saying that, you know, we, we can't still do it and haven't done it. I just think the overall picture and package of, of understanding you know when, when quarterbacks run the ball there's there's issues always with you know extra 
extra hats and hats on hats. And what it really is going to come down to is guys winning. You can't just play that fit ball concept, and we got to expect to win some more of those situations. Obviously, heading into Navy with that triple option offense, have, was there any similarities UCF kind of ran to prepare you guys heading into a team like Navy? No, I, I mean, obviously discipline. I, mean, I think that's where, you know, more than anything that when you play the triple option, I think, you know, last week with a lot of the things they did, it, it made it tough and a little bit more difficult on your discipline, you know, based on your eyes and based on your leverages of things. But, I mean, I think every, each and every week, regardless if it's playing a spread team one week to a triple option the next to a quarter, they all help you continue to build if you have a system. And uh, I think that's what we always envision, regardless in college football, you're going to get something, a lot of times something different each and every week. But it's all got to help you build. So every game does help you prepare for the next. Well, something interesting. He said um, we lacked a lack of, we had a lack of physicality and, and, and aggressiveness at the attack. Is that something that you can teach, or is that just something that they just didn't have going into that? No, I, I think it, it's a comfort level. I think that that's one of the things that uh, last week they do a really good job of, is they take your aggressive nature away because of, you know, just by nature, some of the motions and shifts and pulls. I mean, they're pulling two guys one way and they're running the ball the other way. So by nature, it can take away a little bit of your aggressiveness. And uh, that's where you got to just trust and believe in what it is you're doing. And I think that's where sometimes the older players, the guys that played a lot of ball, you know, when you get in those situations, maybe fare a little bit better. And, uh, you know, then some of those guys that, you know, those things affect them in a bigger way. And I think that as we got down the end, I think that, you know, was one of those things that caused us a little bit of problems. We ask you a lot about how players respond. You have a lot of new assistants on this staff, too. How have you seen maybe the coaches respond this week? Well, I thought it, I thought it was a big deal for us to you know come back in. I came back in here on Sunday. And, you know, obviously my gut hurt and things like that, but for me it was to be an example of of moving on and not dwell upon you know what happens. You know, I mean, I try to say it every week. You look at college football. There's there's not a lot of predictable things. You know. I mean, it's across the board. I, yeah, you can predict probably the, the five or so of them are, you know, going to be in the situation that they're in. But everybody else, it's pretty unpredictable, and you got to each and every week. So, I thought they've been good. I think the the chemistry obviously is is good, but you know, really, you don't find out those things until you have some tar tougher times. And uh, you know, so this is a, not just an opportunity for these 18 to 22 year olds to grow. You know, you can grow as a 49 year old, you can grow as a as a 65 year old, you know, especially with the people that are around you. And uh, it makes everybody, you know, have to grow. And it's a challenge. I don't know. Do we have anybody? Zach, 65, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to say he's 60. I didn't say that. I don't know. 55. That wasn't me. I had nothing to do with it. Wid. Wid. <laughs> He's been here for 65 years. Navy lost their starting quarterback for the season. Does that make it even that much more of a challenge, or do you just rely on triple option? No, it, it actually, it, it does make it a little bit more of a challenge, you know, at least defensively, just trying to figure out, you know, do they stick the same? Do they stay the same? Are they, you know, so um, that's the beauty of it. You know, I, I know that for us, we've got to be able to adapt and adjust and, and not just stay and always do the same things. And, uh, you know, but there, there's a there's a little bit of a, you know, of a guessing game. And uh, when they're really consistent, when they're really, really rolling, you know, I don't think you get a whole lot of different things. And, uh, you know, when they change quarterbacks and have some of those situations, I think that, well, you can get some different things. So it, uh, it makes it for, you know, it makes it for a little longer week, that's for sure. One of the keys to stopping the option is stopping the dive. Oh, you're going to tell me? Okay. I, yeah, I am. Yeah. Uh, do you disagree? You were, you were a triple option pullback? Yeah. Huh? I, was running, like that. I was much smaller <laughs> back then. Um, stopping the dive. Yeah. You, is there a comfort level in knowing Briggs, Corleone? There's never a real comfort know. level in stopping the dive with the triple option, to be honest with you. They, they, they do a really, really good job of it. And, uh, you know, but. It, I mean, the, the first thing it comes down to is people. And, you know, it's better to have those big fellas inside that they give us a better opportunity, that's for sure. Um, but it's all about angles, you know. And they might be 295 pounds or, you know, 300 pounds and not, you know, you're bigger, this, that, the other thing. But it still comes down to angles. It still comes down to two or three yards. And, you know, those things, uh, you know, leave you awake at night when guys like you are running the ball up the middle for two and three yards every every pop.
makes it difficult. Final question. Um, I know you don't want to look ahead too much. I don't think there's any triple option teams in the conference you're going to be in next year. Are you hoping this is the last <laughs> time you have to deal with it for a while, or, or will you schedule more kind of? Yeah, that, teams we're going to we're going to definitely we've talked about trying to find a way to schedule so we can keep our nights long and, okay, and yeah, we can I can get some some good pointers from Chad on how to stop the triple and about the fullback dive. Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously. The, you're going to be playing against others, and you'll be like, dang, I wish we were, you know, preparing for a triple option. Because there are some things in the offseason that it really helps you to, to do. And, uh, you know, the ability to play fundamentally really, really sound and, and uh, you know, just in heightened awareness of the discipline of the things that you got to do. Um, so I'm not saying I will miss playing some triple option teams, uh, but I'll miss, you know, if we don't play them or play somebody that's a triple option, I'll miss – what it allows our guys to do and challenges our guys to do. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. Glad you guys came so you could ask all the questions. And let anybody else talk? <laughs> Have I ever let anybody no. else talk? Usually. Thank you. No, that wasn't something that happens very often. Losing a conference game, how how was it to get in here, get in here on Sunday and kind of get back to work and try to put it behind you? Um, I felt like just getting back in with the guys to make it like better because you back with your teammates and y'all just back going back to work. Last year, obviously, past couple of years you haven't had many games like that where opposing offenses have success, but you also kind of knew the experience and caliber of guys you had last year. How have you treated it? different with this defense as a leader in terms of getting them ready to, to move forward? Um, just keeping everybody up, just keeping everybody like good positive spirits so we can just continue moving forward because we still got everything in front of us. So we just got to continue playing. Did you sense at all maybe the younger guys who maybe weren't here in 2019 and this is the first time they're experiencing that conference loss, were they maybe down maybe that more than you had anticipated? Um, yeah, you get some of them was down, but I was just trying to keep everybody up, just keep everybody in good spirits so we can just continue just moving forward because one game don't define us. Coach talked about him kind of really being hungry to get in here on Sunday and get moving forward. Did it feel the same way for you? Yes, definitely get back with the guys and just practice again, just try to get that behind you and just get ready for the next week. Three of your first four conference games on the road. Now you get the next three of four at home. Does it feel good knowing you know you're gonna get maybe that comfort of being back in the nip, you know, yeah. for most of November? Definitely being back home is always exciting with the fans and stuff being out there for us. Um, just playing the nipper is a different uh, experience. Uh, it's hard to explain. You guys have the home winning streak, and there was the conference winning streak. Do, do you lose a little bit of pressure? Does it feel like the target's off your back a little bit? With you know, I know you still want to keep the home winning streak going, but you don't have to feel like you're going out there and having this. 19 game, three season long conference winning streak to, to keep going? No, I mean, just being us, so just being like here at UC with that streak with, that was going, um, we really didn't focus on that. We just went out and played our game every game. Um, even though we lost it last week, um, we go continue. I mean, everybody still, like, you still, we still won every, so a lot of games. So we're just trying to just keep that going. We asked you a million times before this season started about the loss of Kobe and the loss of Sauce. As you <clears throat> self-evaluate you and Shep's performance through these first seven, eight games, how do you think you guys have done, not just on the field, but as the leaders of that room? Um, I felt like we did good. Um, just I feel like we are doing good, not did good, because we're still in the season. Um, we're making the plays that come our way, and we're doing what we got to do uh, on the outside. I'm just making sure we play our game and just do what we got to do. What about inside? Taj and Sammy haven't had their names called a bunch this year. I think that's a good thing. Cause yeah, but that's a great thing. Uh, some people might think it's not good, but not getting your name called. has got to be something good about that. I'm not letting up too many catches in the inside. I feel like they're doing good. Are you, is, is, is that a reflection of how they're playing? Do you feel like they're playing really well, and that's why maybe they're not getting targeted? Yeah, yeah. 
does it get frustrating at times just because of like how the the coverage works that teams maybe start picking on that side of the field because you give a little bit of a cushion do you do you start getting antsy and want to jump around like how do you keep your discipline when that's happening um, I feel like, yeah, it's hard being a corner and we play like that. Um, so, like, the free access throws might be there sometime. Um, I mean, sometimes I might get a little antsy, but then I think to myself, like, if you get antsy on this route, the double move may come here. So just continue playing your game and don't let, like, these little five-yard catches, like, get in your head. How much just instinctively do you just want to be like, Coach, let me go, let me go get up there and get my hands on them? Um, last last game I told him a little bit, but <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but he was like, no, because our defense is still our defense. Our defense been working, so we're not going to change who we are. How cool has it been seeing Shep blossom this year? Because that was a spot that was challenged. JQ pushed him. <clears throat> he came on at the end of camp, and it feels like week by week by week, he's gotten better and better and better over on the boundary. Um, uh, it's definitely amazing watching them like grow from not playing to being a starter now and actually coming out to play good every game, uh, practice, he's got the energy. So yeah, I just like to see that from him and it's like helps me like stay up and keep everybody up too. <clears throat> do you like triple option teams or do you dread these games? Uh, do I like triple option teams? Yeah, like, do you like going against triple option teams? Or do Nobody you like going against triple <laughs> option teams. Um, yeah, no, nah, but um, it's definitely a challenge you got to embrace. Um, so I think we do that as a defense, and we come out and play these teams just like we play our techniques and we do what we got to do. Big pick late in the game against Navy last year. Was that a reminder of even though there feels like they're just running the ball, maybe running up the middle a million times, that you kind of got to keep that focus? Yeah, because you definitely got to keep the focus on keeping your eyes on your man because if you don't, the ball will go over your head, and then that's a touchdown. And Navy, wanna, they, when they score, they uh, like want to limit the offensive possession, so you got to stop them from scoring so your offense can put up points. And losing your eye control would make them put up 50 points. How much focus has there been on third down <clears throat> defense? Because it feels like it, you know, that, that was – a major strength last year. This year it hasn't been as good. Has there been much talk about it, much focus on it? Oh, yeah, we always focus on third down. Um, so we got a day for that. So we work on our third down, our red zone days. Um, so, yeah, we've been more like more on it and like picking up like the pace of practice and stuff, making sure like on third down we make sure we get them off the field and just create our stops that we need to have. Will said after the loss on Saturday that this team goes as the seniors go. Obviously, with the high-powered UCF offense, you quickly turn to a triple option team. Have you seen any similarities in the run game a little bit there? Obviously, UCF is known to be a run-heavy offense, but leaning forward, have you seen any kind of similarities in the game plan there? Um, uh, no, not really with UCF because um, they more spread you out and then run the ball maybe. But uh, with Navy, they go get in a duck formation and block you and just run uh, leads or options and stuff like that. You were a part of a pretty scary play on Saturday with UCF's quarterback. What did you see on that play and, and just, you know, your your thoughts of how you were able to get in there and make that tackle? Um, if I'm saying it right, we was in cover two. Um, I look back, like he came out to scramble, he got out the pocket and I look back and I seen someone behind me. So I'm like, he's known for acting like he's gonna run, then pull it up, throw it over your head. So I went to First turn, so he couldn't throw it over my head. And then when he crossed the line, just went up to go make a tackle. And it was a physical tackle. Um, try, try to keep like both our heads out of the play. But I was just trying to um, just make a tackle, make a play there. Any other questions for our form? Cool. Thank you. No problem. No problem. So, yeah, long time. Obviously, you missed some time early in the season after the Arkansas game. How are you feeling physically? Do you feel like you're 100 percent back? Uh, being being week eight or nine, I wouldn't say 100 percent. You know, I still took took a, a lot of reps at practice and stuff while I was missing time. Um, but I feel good. I feel like I'm getting back. Um, might have got a little uh, out of shape. Um, so still working through that kind of thing. But um, I do feel pretty good. Yeah. Where does that ability on punt returns to understand where they're coming at you from, how to make people miss with that initial 
move or two? Like, is that just a natural ability? Is that something you can work on? Um, you can say it's natural, but a lot of it um, <clears throat> comes from the work I get at running back. Um, and then also trusting those guys outside, like Sammy and JQ and um, Justin, guys that rotate in there just to do their job. They've been doing it pretty well. So um, and as far as making people miss, that comes a lot from um, drilling it for running back in the offseason and stuff like that, just getting a lot of reps. Uh, running the ball was a challenge, obviously, Saturday night. Um, and then, obviously, you broke away with that late touchdown. Can you take us through that play and what you saw? And did you think that, OK, maybe this is the one that's going to get us over the hump? Right. Uh, I can't say pre-snap. You know, we had trouble running the ball all night, uh, all night like you said. Um, I think it was third and short. Um, we kind of got into a rhythm throwing the ball. Um, I think it was just probably a really good play call. Um, had Josh Wiley facts back. and. <clears throat> Made a good good block on the defensive end, and Joe Huber kind of caved the whole offensive line down and part of like the Red Sea. Um, one guy to beat. It's my job, so um, really good, really good call, really good um, blocking up front. Kind of, kind of the uh, the referee was in the middle of the field, and the one on one with the safety, and I used the referee a little bit. Um, I'm sure it was probably frustrating um, as a DB, but um, ended up ended up getting there. By design, it looked like that was. Wanting their eyes to go with Wiley, right? Yeah. How important is it him for him to sell that? Not, you know, not only that he's going to go into the flat right. and get the safety, but also to get the the seal block that right. opens up the, the whole side. Yeah, I mean that's a play we've ran. I mean a type of play we've ran since I've been here. Um, you know, just just side to guard got really famous doing that, um, and teams have to really honor that. And I think that was a big part of that play opening up. Aside from that touchdown run, what did they do that made it so difficult to run the ball Saturday? Um, you know, it felt like uh, at times they, they did a little bit different uh, type of scheme than we prepared for. Um, you know, they had a lot more guys in the box than we were anticipating. And, um, you know, a lot of those free, like we had a lot of free access opportunities that Ben took. And um, that's just part of the game. But um, we know we got to get back in here and, and get to work this week and try to figure out how to get that going. <clears throat> you and Chuck handled most of the work on Saturday. We didn't see a lot of Corey. Was that something that was maybe communicated to you all that, hey, we're going to stick with you two this game, or is that just how the game unfolded? No, I don't think it was uh, kind of how the game ended up going. You know, um, even Miles, you know, we're all, all four of us were prepared to go any given time. And, uh, you know, it may not have happened Saturday, but <clears throat> we just trust that, you know, we're put in the best position to do what we need to. Coach talked about part of that was the responsibilities and pass blocking in the pass game in general. You know, what what, do, what are those for you on a play to play basis, whether it's blocking or getting out and receiving? And it seems like you are kind of one of the most trusted guys right. in that squad for, for this team. Yeah, uh, it kind of comes with just, you know, being here and, and knowing the offense. You know, uh, Corey and Miles haven't been here as long. And if, you know, um, <clears throat> especially Corey, just getting really comfortable learning the offense and things like that. And, you know, <clears throat> we feel like we uh, teams have thrown a lot of different things at us. Um, so a adjusting and then, you know, knowing, you know, your rules and responsibilities um, can be difficult sometimes. So, you know, just kind of get in there, like really digging into the play, like stuff like that. So this team has struggled to offensively start fast. Right. First half, second half. What is there anything in your mind or anything you think, you know, needs to maybe start coming a little bit more clear so you guys can get off to a little bit faster starts? Yeah, I, I don't think there's any definitive answer to that. You know, we kind of talk about it every week. You know, we go in the week. That's our plan, <clears throat> especially last last two weeks. You know, we come in here early all throughout the week trying to um, get that going, that kind of mindset. Um, just got to keep working. And, you know, as seniors, you got to take leadership, like ownership and leadership and make that happen. How much does that get thrown off, especially if you script early plays and then you come out and, like you said, there's maybe more guys in the box or they're sh showing you something different that you hadn't seen on yeah. film before that? Um, it can be difficult, and, you know, especially we're talking about this week, you know, with the triple option team may get, like, um, limited possessions. Um, so that's really important to start fast. And um, the plays we script are probably plays we work a lot throughout the week. Um, so we really <clears throat> need to take better ownership and execute that a little better.